Welcome to the session on Mughal Gardens. The Islamic garden has always been an area of research essentially pursued by art historians. It is an ensemble where agriculture, garden, encampment, city and territory recursively and mutually influence one another. Here, the structural relationship between the garden and its context should be analyzed from all possible viewpoints, both physical at all scales from the environment to the city and metaphorical or allegorical, the relationship between the garden and the city as an image of the king. Despite regional differences, Islamic anthropic processes behave according to the same rules underlying governing the culture. On one side, religious imagery and hierarchy. On the other side, the necessity and vanity of expressing the power of the dominator. The royal city is based on three recurrent key themes. First, gardens and palaces merge together as places of heterodox pleasure. Second, the importance of the court ceremonial. And third, the vast and complex system of gardens and palaces, sometimes taking the form of a labyrinth as if to express the idea of the king's divine and quasi-imagical isolation. Besides the function of retreat from reality and protection from wild nature, the Islamic garden has generally aimed to represent in more or less explicit form the religious paradise. To complicate the play on imagery and metaphor, it also offers an allegorical sequence for the exaltation of royal power. Despite the difference between Western and Eastern Islam, the theme was always the same. In Spain and in Maghreb, the Sultan, Vicar of God, exploited the association between the Garden of Paradise and the Garden of the King as the auric representation of their authority. In the East, in the Hellenistic tradition, conferring divine nature on the Emperor transforms the garden into a royal hall for the theophany of the king. In both cases, the garden is the favorite symbol for the omnipotence of the king. Mughal gardens are a group of gardens built by the Mughals in the Islamic style of architecture. This style was heavily influenced by the Persian gardens, particularly the Charbagh structure. Significant use of rectilinear layouts are made within the walled enclosures. Some of the typical features include pools, fountains and canals inside the gardens. The founder of the Mughal Empire, Babur, described his favorite type of garden as a charbagh. This word developed a new meaning in India as Babur explains. India lacked the fast-flowing streams required for the Central Asian Charbagh. The Agra Garden, now known as the Rambagh, is thought to have been the first Charbagh. India, Bangladesh and Pakistan have a number of Mughal gardens which differ from their Central Asian predecessors with respect to the highly disciplined geometry. An early textual reference about Mughal gardens is found in the memoirs and the biographies of the Mughal emperors, including those of Babur, Humayun and Akbar. Later references are found from the accounts of India written by various European travellers. Bernier, for example. The first serious historical study of Mughal gardens was written by Constance Villiers Stewart with the title Gardens of the Great Mughals. Some examples of Mughal gardens are Shalimar Gardens in Lahore, Lalbagh Fort at Dhaka and Shalimar Bagh in Srinagar. From the beginnings of the Mughal Empire, the construction of gardens was a beloved imperial pastime. 
Babur, the first Mughal conqueror king, had gardens built in Lahore and Dholpur. Humayun, his son, does not seem to have had much time for building. He was busy reclaiming and increasing the realm. But he is known to have spent a great deal of time at his father's gardens. Akbar built several gardens, first in Delhi, then in Agra, Akbar's new capital. These tended to be riverfront gardens rather than the fortress gardens that his predecessors built. Building riverfront rather than fortress gardens influenced later Mughal garden architecture considerably. Akbar's heir Jahangir did not build as much, but he helped to lay out the famous Shalimar garden. Jahangir's son Shah Jahan marks the apex of Mughal garden architecture and floral design. He is famous for the construction of the Taj Mahal, a sprawling funeral paradise in memory of his favorite wife Mumtaz Mahal. He is also responsible for the Red Fort at Delhi, which contains the Mata Bagh, a night garden that was filled with night blooming jasmine and other pale flowers. The pavilions within are faced with white marble to glow in the moonlight. Design and Symbolism The garden is often regarded as a manifestation of refined beauty and intricate symbolism. Mughal garden design derives primarily from the medieval Islamic garden, although there are nomadic influences that come from the Mughals' Turkish-Mongolian ancestry. Julie Scott Maysami describes the medieval Islamic garden as a hottest conclusus, walled off and protected from the outside world. Within, its design was rigidly formal and its inner space was filled with those elements that man finds most pleasing in nature. Its essential features included running water, perhaps the most important element, and a pool to reflect the beauties of sky and garden, trees of various sorts, some to provide shade merely and the others to produce fruits, flowers, colourful and sweet smelling, grass usually growing wild under the trees, birds to fill the garden with song, the whole cooled by a pleasant breeze. The garden might include a raised hillock at the centre reminiscent of the mountain at the centre of the universe in cosmological descriptions and often surmounted by a pavilion or palace. The Turkish-Mongolian elements of the Mughal garden are primarily related to the inclusion of tents, carpets and canopies reflecting nomadic roots. Tents indicated status in these societies. So, wealth and power were displayed through the richness of the fabrics as well as by size and number. The Mughals were obsessed with symbol and incorporated it into their gardens in many ways. The standard Quranic references to paradise were in the architecture, layout and in the choice of plant life. But more secular references including numerological and zodiacal significances connected to family history or other cultural significance were often juxtaposed. The numbers 8 and 9 were considered auspicious by the Mughals and can be found in the number of terraces or in garden architecture such as octagonal pools. The garden and the camp were the only forms available to the Mughals when they started redesigning Indian cities in the semblance of the new royal image. Refusing to adapt to the existing fabric and the torrid Indian climate, they created exclusive settlements for themselves. Instinctively, design layouts were drawn from the garden. Neglecting the Indo-Muslim city of Agra on the right bank of the river, Baba decided to settle on the opposite side, building a regular pattern of gardens in the manner of those of Lahore and Dholpur, 
stretching for more than a kilometer in which the idea of monumentality and representation of the new order was entrusted to the high continuous stone plinth along the river. This pattern ended up establishing a framework for future urban development. Barber's successors strengthened the previous Mughal fabric by building the red fort and the Taj Mahal and further pursued the design of gardens along both banks of the Yamuna, among which the outstanding example is the tomb garden of Itirnad al Daula. Furthermore, starting from the second half of the 16th century, the Mughal gardens of delights progressively turned to marble and sandstone palaces, rigorously retaining the order, rhythm and ratios of pre-existent gardens, the typical forms of the original pavilions, the hierarchical arrangement of the enclosures and despite the decrease of greenery, all the garden furnishings, fountains, pools, canals and chadar. The world of the garden persists both in the royal palace and in the city. It endures through the structural relationship between garden and encampment and by the bottom up procession from the monumental entrance located at the lower level to the enclosure of the royal palace at the very top as in the Darbar of Agra. In the city, it persists in the pre-existent pattern of fields and orchards as well as by the ever sought after relationship between the garden and the city as an image of the king. The latter is best exemplified by the plan of the city of Hyderabad in Deccan founded by Sultan Kuli Kutub Shah in 1591 on the banks of the river Musi with a cross-shaped plan designed by a Persian architect. As a response to an ideological program which prescribed the creation of a replica of the paradise of the Quran, the archetypal form of the Persian garden, a vegetal metaphor for heaven, appeared as the most adequate solution. Major Mughal Gardens Shalimar Bagh, Srinagar It is in Kashmir that the relationship between garden and city as image of the king is not only confirmed but extended to the scale of the territory. Around Srinagar, Jahangir and his son Shah Jahan started transforming the environment in order to mark their territory. In Shalimar Bagh, the first terrace after the entrance built by Jahangir in 1619 dominated by a telar, a pavilion sheltering the throne was the place reserved for the Darbar. The second and third terraces are two typical Kahar Bagh completed by Shah Jahan after 1630. The first is the private garden. According to a Kashmiri ritual, the king sits in the center of a square pool of water marked at its corners by four monumental plane trees. The second is the Kahar Bagh of the Zahane featuring the magnificent black pavilion. A torrent diverted into the garden is a broad channel measuring 6 meters across majestically flowing among plane trees and chenar. The enclosures of the terraces of Shalimar represent the correct layout for the performance of daily court life based on a rigorous ritual yet extremely flexible in the use of space. It represents a model subjected to infinite variations and reinterpretations according to the same underlying principle. Nishat Bagh It is a terraced Mughal garden built on the eastern side of the Dal Lake close to Srinagar in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, India. It is the second largest Mughal garden in the Kashmir Valley. The largest in size is the Shalimar Bagh. The Bagh was designed and built in 1633 by Asif Khan, elder brother of Nur Jahan. 
even though the layout of Nishat Bagh was based on the basic conceptual model of the Persian gardens, it had to be remodeled to fit the topographic and water source conditions at the site chosen in the Kashmir Valley. The plan, instead of being central with four radiating arms in a square pattern as in the case of Chahar suited for a flat countryside, was changed to an axial stream flow design to fit the hill conditions with water source originating at the top of the hill end. This resulted in planning a rectangular layout rather than a square layout. This helped in dispensing with the long side arms. Thus, a rectangular layout with east-west length of 548 meters and width of 338 meters was adopted. Nishat Bagh, as laid out now, is a broad cascade of terraces lined with avenues of chinar and cypress trees, which starts from the lake shore and reaches up to an artificial facade at the hill end. Rising from the edge of the Dal Lake, it has 12 terraces representing 12 zodiacal signs. However, it has only two sections, namely the public garden and the private garden for the Zanana or Harem vis-a-vis -vis the four sections of the Shalimar Bagh. This difference is attributed to the fact that the latter Bagh catered to the Mughal emperor while Nishad Bagh belonged to a man of his court, a noble. There are however some similarities with the Shalimar Bagh such as the polished stone channel and terraces. The source of water supply to the two gardens is the same. Built in an east-west direction, the top terrace has the Zenana garden while the lowest terrace is connected to the Dal Lake. In recent years, the lowest terrace has merged with the approach road. A spring called the Gopi Thirst provides clear water supply to the gardens. The central canal which runs through the garden from the top end is 4 meters wide and has a water depth of 20 centimeters. Water flows down in a cascade from the top to the first terrace at the road level which could also be approached from the Dal Lake through a Shikara ride. The water flow from one terrace to the next is over stepped stone ramps that provide the sparkle to the flow. At all the terraces, fountains with pools are provided along the water channel. At channel crossings, benches are provided for people to sit and enjoy the beauty of the garden and the cascading flows and fountain jets. Out of all the terraces, the second terrace is considered the most impressive in view of the 23 niches provided in the arched recess just behind the cascade. Originally, lighted lamps used to be placed at these niches. The second terrace also has abundance of Persian lilacs and pansies coupled with sparkling cascading water over the chute which provided a lovely sight. Another interesting feature in the Nishat Bagh is of the many marble thrones like seats placed at the head of the waterfall across the channel. Hayat Baksh Bagh Mughals brought with them the West Asian tradition of developing gardens to symbolically represent paradise on earth. Planning and design of the Hayat Baksh Bagh or life bestowing garden was integrated into the design of the Red Fort. The garden comprised many aesthetically designed structures such as tanks, pavilions, water channels and fountains which complemented flowers of various colors and trees of various kinds. The pavilions were decorated with stonework and lit by lamps at night. A few other smaller gardens like the Mehta Bagh were also constructed in the Red Fort. Two pavilions called Savan and Bhadan stand at either end of the north-south channel. Two smaller pavilions were added in 1842 by the last Mughal emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar 
one of which still stands along the eastern wall. Shalimar Gardens, Lahore It was built by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in Lahore, modern day Pakistan. Construction began in 1641 AD and was completed the following year. The project management was carried out under the superintendence of Khalilullah Khan, a noble of Shah Jahan's court, in cooperation with Ali Mardan Khan and Mullah Alaul Malk Tuni. The Shalimar Gardens are laid out in the form of an oblong parallelogram surrounded by a high brick wall which is famous for its intricate fretwork. This garden was made on the concept of Char Bagh. The gardens measure 658 meters north to south and 258 meters east to west. The gardens have been laid out from south to north in three descending terraces which are elevated by 4 to 5 meters above one another. The three terraces have names in Urdu as follows. The upper terrace named Farah Baksh meaning bestower of pleasure. The middle terrace named Faiz Baksh meaning bestower of goodness. The lower terrace named Hayat Baksh meaning bestower of life. From this basin and from the canal rise 410 fountains which discharge into wide marble pools. It is a credit to the creativity of Mughal engineers that even today scientists are unable to fully comprehend the water systems and thermal engineering from architectural blueprints. The distribution of the fountains is as follows. The upper level terrace has 105 fountains, the middle level terrace has 152 fountains, the lower level terrace has 153 fountains. All combined, the gardens has 410 fountains. The gardens have five water cascades including the great marble cascade and Savan Bhadur. To conclude, as Attilio Petruccioli puts, Mughal geometric order essence in a territorial grid capable of reaching beyond the regional scale. The Indian subcontinent has always been an incomplete system of hydraulic infrastructure and street networks as well as services and gardens for the stopovers in the king's journeys where each garden was itself a small scale territory furrowed by canals and tree lined paths. A constant set of relationships that has shaped the territory of today. Compare the design and symbolism of gardens from different cultures. Ruggles D. Fairchild, Islamic Gardens and Landscapes, University of Pennsylvania Press, 2008. Sikandar Satar, The Shalimar, A Typical Muslim Garden, Environmental Design. Journal of the Islamic Environmental Design Research Center, 2, 1986. Leherman, Jonas Benzion, 1980. Earthly Paradise, Garden and Courtyard in Islam. University of California Press. Constance Villiers Stewart, Gardens of the Great Mughals, 1913. Newton Wilbur D, 1979, Persian Gardens and Garden Pavilions, Washington. Westcott James L. Walsh Bullman Joachim, 1996. Mughal Gardens, Sources, Places, Representations and Prospects. Dumberton Oaks, Washington, D.C. Here we conclude this session on Mughal Gardens. We will meet again for another session. Till then, bye.